a special bulletin from Trenton, New Jersey. It's been a little while since families huddled around the radio for entertainment. And honestly, these days it takes a pretty major event to even get us in front of the TV at the same time. Hooray! But ironically, at a time with more visual content available than ever before, big players in entertainment are betting that it's time for the radio drama to make a comeback. So I guess my question is, why? People have been talking about podcasts being the next big thing basically since they were invented. And podcasts are bigger than ever. But Star Wars? Wolverine? Probably not the type of stories you'd expect to listen to. For the first time in a long time, audio is being treated like a first-class medium. We've been working on Star Wars Dooku Jedi Lost, which is the first ever Star Wars um, audiobook with a full cast. So instead of just having one narrator, we have uh, a number of different people playing roles in the story. Kevin Scott is the author of Dooku, Jedi Lost. Speak only when they have something useful to say. A Jedi should. It explores the backstory of a character in the Star Wars prequel movies from the early 2000s. So what made you decide to do an audio version of this? Why, why not TV? Why not print? I think it's because um, listening is becoming so much part of people's lives now. It's become, I think, something people do when they're commuting more than perhaps reading a book. But it was really interesting to see um, Star Wars sort of asked to do this, acknowledging that the fact that things are changing so fast. Things are changing fast. A lot of people don't even know this type of content exists, and yet there's already so much of it to choose from. Audible is the largest um, creator and distributor of audio content. Most recently, where we've really been doubling down is creating our own and creating these Audible originals with top-notch talent, absolutely creative writers and artists and musicians and performers. You probably know Audible as the Amazon company that makes spoken versions of print books, but they're also one of the companies leading the charge into original audio content, stories written specifically for the audio platform, not just a book read out loud. Like Amazon and Netflix did with original video content, Audible is hoping to grow their existing audience with these new audio stories. We just worked with Kate McKinnon from SNL on her new brainchild. It's called Heads Will Roll. Try the second one. Off with your head. Better. It's comedy. It's episodic. It's scripted. Just pure, sheer fun. Why are people flocking to this all of a sudden? There are so many other moments in the day when people are realizing that, oh, I could just, I could just get a little story in now. While they're walking the dog, they can listen. While they're washing the dishes or, um, or folding laundry, this is when you can listen. It's almost found time, mm. and, and audio is playing a big part in that. That's one reason reason we kept hearing about why this stuff is getting so popular. Audio can fit into parts of your life that video can't. When we look at, people talk about audio, or at least I talk about it, I, I look at it as passive content. And by passive content, it's something that you can listen to going to work, going to the, at the gym, um, cooking dinner, etc., etc. And it's a, one of the few types of content where you can be doing two things at once. Daniel Fink works at Marvel. He's the creator of a series of audio dramas based on Wolverine. Yup, that Wolverine. Passive content is just one of the fastest growing mediums of content right now. It just creates a huge opportunity for us to continue expanding and, and telling our stories. When people think about Marvel, they think about comics, which are super visual. They think about the movies, massive blockbusters, also super visual. Why take this thing to audio? Well, we're still a storytelling company at heart. Uh, of course, yes, everyone knows this for visuals. So if you read a comic, it's a visual experience. A film is very visual, but it still goes into character and characters are about story. Uh, Wolverine being one of my favorites in terms of one of the most complex characters you can really ever know. He goes by another name as well. Where is it? Wolverine. Where is Wolverine? I told you I don't know no Marine. With audio, you can really get into a lot of the depth of the character because you're so focused on uh, the nuances, uh, where in visual, it's all about the splash. Whenever a book gets made into a movie, oftentimes the people that really love the book criticize the film because it, the, there's a, a richness or a depth that's, that's missing. For sure. It seems to me like audio allows for a similar kind of like deeper dive and deeper exploration into something. Yeah, I mean, like TV, well, you, you know, the best TV shows, is you spend a time with the character. And so audio is similar. Um, where we really get to spend time with those characters or the mystery and the suspense. It really pushes our imagination, especially in audio, where uh, you get to imagine what this world looks like. That's the other thing we heard over and over. Audio, like a good book, leaves details to the imagination. Everyone envisions a story a little bit differently in their head. 
So far, we've talked about scripted storytelling, but there really is a lot of diversity in the types of content we discovered. We're working with Marcus Samuelson for uh, a brand new Audible original called Our Harlem. It's fantastic. He brings us into his restaurant, Red Rooster, in Harlem, and you hear the sounds of cooking, you hear the jazz music that's always playing. Almost every home cook on the planet has a favorite bird recipe in the back pocket and two stashed in the top drawer. It's, it's a different just... sensory experience. Exactly, and it's, it's reinventing the cookbook for mm -hmm. audio. A cookbook might not seem like a natural fit for this, but Chef Marcus Samuelson wanted to do more than share recipes. He wanted to share his experience with the town he loves, Harlem. Urban America works differently. The best food might be in the park at a barbecue, or the best cornbread might be at a block party, not necessarily at the hippest restaurant. Marcus comes from fine dining. You've probably seen him on shows like Chopped or Iron Chef, but it was during his experience outside of high-end restaurants, his experience in Harlem, that he felt most at home. A restaurant doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? Especially not a place like this. You have to incorporate the soul of everything that's around you. I mean, the word restaurant really means to restore your community, right? So when I think about that from a restoring point of view, it's like creating jobs here. Who do I buy from? Who do I serve? Who do I create jobs for? So that, that's a hub for so many people. You seem to have a thing for integrating a bunch of different components into one yeah. project. You're really, really doing that with this next thing you're working on with Audible. It's, it's, a, it's a cookbook, it's music, it's culture and history. Yeah. I've done cookbooks for years, but once Audible came into the picture, it really opened up a new door. It can be much more intimate. Right? You can listen to it in your car, or you can be inspired on the way home from work through, through your phone. That's amazing. It's not told only by me, it's told by this amazing community. So if you want to know about art in Harlem, Thelma Golden will cure it and tell you that. If you want to know about a great recipe from the South, you know, Jessica Harris will tell you that. And that's the last thing we discovered about this stuff. Audio has a certain intimacy to it. Hearing people tell their own stories right in your ear or in your car. I was listening to Trevor Noah's memoir, Born a Crime. Mm -hmm. um, had that on during my commute. I thought Trevor was in the passenger seat next to me, right? Because it was him performing and I could hear his story directly from him, the way he intended it, doing impressions of his mother's accent, right? And I wouldn't have gotten that same experience um, from the page. So it's, it's differentiated in that way. I think that there is something around our American history. Americans are great at knowing things about Italy or France or England or all over the world. Sometimes we need to be reminded that Harlem is cool, New York is cool, America is cool, especially in this device's time. What could be better than told and listen to our oral American history? And if you can do that with learning how to make some grits, take it. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good day. So this stuff, radio plays, audio dramas, podcasts, whatever you want to call them, seems to be different than what we're used to seeing on TV or at the movies. It can fit into our lives in places video can't. It can leave a little more to the imagination, and it can be more intimate. But really what I think I discovered here is that print, video, audio, they all have unique qualities. But good storytelling is good storytelling. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.